What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the Brew Lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the Brew Lab, I'm coming at you with another episode of Spoiler Talk. And holy cannoli, do we have some spoilers. I let uh, Sunday just go by without doing a video because typical Sundays during spoiler season, we only got three cards. But uh, Monday did not disappoint. We got our buttload of cards to get through and some of them look really really spicy so let's just jump right into it shall we first up we've got piromane del maglio infocato <laughs> seems like we got a few cards spoiled in italy today uh hmm, let me see mm, but, well okay i just ruined it for myself pyromancer of the flaming mallet yeah i was gonna say but pyromancer or oh, the pyromaniac really in italian this translates as pyromaniac of the fiery mall here it's pyromancer of the flaming mallet okay and forget it what why would they put that here and then the actual card's called pious sledge arsonist and sometimes the translations are really wonky uh but this is more um support for the racto sacrifice deck as if it freaking needed it it just keeps getting better and better and better i got uh, destroyed by that deck on uh my tournament run yesterday it was a really really close match but in the end, he, he kicked my butt. My uh, Esper Walker's deck is just not ready to deal with artifacts as much as I'd hoped. I brought in an extra copy of March of Otherworldly Light and both my Farewells and Jingitaxius, which is sort of all of the um, artifact hate that I have in my deck. And uh, it just wasn't enough. I wasn't, I'd never top decked the stuff when I needed it. And at one point, he had three only called Anvils on the board, and I just got completely thrashed and of course only called anvil dodges vanishing verse because it's multicolored. Oh, oh, it was such a frustrating match uh but three drop right now that deck is playing fable of the mirror breaker so i don't know if this will replace it at all uh maybe it will because it's kind of just like everyone's just putting fable of the mirror breaker in every single deck that plays red and it does some stuff and it's good enough as it is but it's not necessarily fitting the whole sack theme so this might just be better on the long run because you can do a lot of damage with this uh, over time uh three mana for a two two viashino shaman and you can pay one colorless tap it and it deals x damage to any target so you're clearly going face with this thing where x is the number of permanents you sacrifice this turn so even if it's just one little construct that you're sacrificing to your only called anvil every turn that's still uh, you know, an additional damage on top of the, you know, Mituk Massacre, your Warlock class, uh, this guy, it starts to pile up quite a lot. And uh, it's okay that it's, a, like, it's nice that it's just one colorless to tap it. It's not terribly expensive to do. So, might see some play. I'm definitely going to test it out. Next up, we got some more support for uh, Rakto Sack. <laughs> As if, again, it needed it. This time, it's the Captain of the Forge. Let's see if I nailed it. forge boss okay okay captain boss i wonder why they do that i mean it would have been just fine as forge captain but anyway four mana two colorless and rack those colors black and red for a three four human warrior and whenever you sacrifice one or more other creatures forge boss deals two damage to each opponent disability triggers only once each turn why did they have to put that in there if it's already one or more isn't that redundant text If not, <laughs> this ability triggers only once each turn. Yeah, but... I guess it's for, like, commander, no? But no, still, whenever you sacrifice one or more other creatures, so it's only going to trigger once anyway. This text is redundant. Please let me know in the comments, like, why you think they put that in there uh anyway interesting more more and more and more like again throw that on top of all the other things i just mentioned in the example you got your metook massacre your leveled up warlock class uh you know your um only called anvil your pyromancer here and the captain of the forge and you just all you're doing in one turn is sacrificing one um, construct captain of the forge does two damage Pyromancer, so two, then Pyromancer does one. 
Uh, the Only Cult Anvil does one. The uh, Meatook Massacre does one. And then the, at the end of turn, the Warlock class will do one. So that's six damage in one turn just from sacrificing one little creature. Of course, you need to have all of those things on the battlefield, which is not a, a mean feat to obtain, but still, uh, lots and lots of support for Rakdos Sack these days. And I have a feeling it's going to be a definite force to be reckoned with, so beware. Next up, we got... This, this is a funny one. Look at the, look at the artwork. Exotic Pets. Uh, one colorless and Azorius, blue and white, for an instant speed a little uh, token generator. I like that you can do this sort of as a... Okay, I don't have any blockers. Uh, I'm thinking of something like su uh, Sunset Revelry, which is sorcery speed. Makes two chump blockers, potentially. There's a lot more caveats to that. Not a great comparison, but you know what I mean. Just something that poops out little tokens. This one's got an interesting upside. It um, Well, first of all, those creatures can't be blocked. These little fish t creatures that you, that you create can't be blocked. But then, for each kind of counter among creatures you control you put a counter of that kind on either of these tokens i think right now in standard we've only got plus one plus one counters and uh the new shield counters and yes uh there's a uh, death touch counters and menace counters on two of the ninjas the biting palm ninja and i think it's the the kappa tech something but you're not really going to be playing exotic pests in the ninjas decks so that's not uh, really relevant the um main types of counters I think you're going to be putting on these guys is going to be the plus one plus one counters and the shield counters and it'll be great because if it's shield counters you can then chump block with them as your opponents are swinging in and uh, they won't die and you can chump block with them again the following turn if necessary or you know maybe attack in with them because they can't be blocked and get and, you know kill the opponent that way um, but also just to have things that have counters on them is going to be important because of the um the new mob boss from the i believe it's the where was she bup, 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 bup. you know the one i mean you can you can look at the top yeah here she is falco spara you may look at the top card of your library any turn you may cast spells from the top of your library by removing a counter from a creature you control in addition to paying their other costs so there might be a time when you know you're running low on counters you don't want to remove your counters from your creatures because they need to stay big so then you can just uh have some of those counters for free end up on your exotic pests they're anyway just sack fodder and you can just uh, keep uh, casting stuff off the top of your library and there's many many more uses for exotic pets so let's see if it ends up uh, seeing any play but uh pretty fun little card which brings us finally to monday's absolute freaking dump of cards uh this one i could not help but see ahead of time as usual i'm doing this like blind i haven't looked at these all day on purpose it's now 4 a.m as i'm recording this so uh yeah I, as i said i like to do my spoiler talk videos as a bit of um first impressions type video as well just talk and shop and uh, this one though was just everywhere on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I couldn't help but see it. And it's a spicy one, but we'll get to it. First up, we got Suspicious Bookcase. Two mana, zero, four, Defender. And then you can pay three colorless, tap it, and target creature can't be blocked this turn. It's not bad. I liken it to Wedding Invitation. Uh, it's a two mana artifact from Crimson Bow. When it enters the battlefield, you draw, draw a card, which is a nice little upside. Of course, this that um, this wall here doesn't draw you a card. The, the suspicious bookcase doesn't draw you a card, but it is a, 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 a good blocker. Um, and then uh, the wedding invitation tapped without having to pay anything, but then you had to sacrifice it. So it's done once and then it's gone. And it gave a vampire lifelink if it was the creature that you know was making you were making unblockable was a vampire also gained lifelink so kind of similar cards but in this case you get a body and you can continuously do this effect and uh, there'll be some decks that really want that because it's you know at some point even if you have evasive flyers or tramplers or whatever the creatures that the opponent has getting in the way of your um, attackers will prevent you from getting through for that final bit of damage now you can just pay three, tap your bookcase, and give one of those creatures unblockable. And that's pretty cool. So, I think we need a, a tab of its own for this card, because uh, this is a spicy one, guys. This is going to be so fun to play with, all the way back into all sorts of formats. Uh, I, of course, focus entirely on standard, so I'm not too interested with um, historic and things like that. But what a card. So it's a one mana legendary artifact equipment. 
Equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each counter on it. Equipped permanent isn't a planeswalker and is a creature in addition to its other types. What? So you can equip this thing to your planeswalkers and it now is no longer a planeswalker, it becomes a creature. Cool. <laughs> of course, it gets plus one plus one for each counter on it. Loyalty counts as counters, loyalty counters. And so let's say you put this on your, uh, what's a good example? Yeah, okay, let's just say even something as simple as um, your, uh, oh goodness, what's his name? Kaito Shizuki. Turn three, turn four, you play this equip it. The equipped planeswalker is cheaper than the equipped creature, which is relevant as hell. Equipped creature is three, equipped planeswalker is only one. Uh, it, the type, especially good in, on the type of planeswalkers that you're mostly just plussing all the time. Uh, you know, you, you initially do a minus two on your um, Kaito, and then it's just plus, plus, plus from that point onwards, pretty much. So then it becomes a creature, and it, uh, you know, is the power and toughness of, uh, of the amount of loyalty that it has on it. I don't know how good that is, though. Like, the whole... I mean, I mean people are going crazy and having fun, like... And I, so am I. I mean, it's obviously very fun, and there's going to be plenty of jank we can build, and, and p potentially could be quite actual serious jank <laughs> but what i'm worried about is that the whole thing with planeswalkers is that they're a little bit harder to interact with than creatures you know you can't hit your planeswalkers with a sweeper now it's a creature your planeswalker will just get swept up uh, with a doom scar uh, you know there's some removal that doesn't target planeswalkers but only targets creatures now they can point that removal at your planeswalker <laughs> So, I don't know. There's going to be maybe a specific Planeswalker that's really good to have this on. Um, we'll have to figure it out. I was thinking something along the lines of uh, maybe my Grandmaster of Flowers or something. But uh, we'll have to see. Definitely fun. Definitely fun. I don't think you'll be putting a 4 of any deck though. Maybe like a 2 of. And see what happens. I can see this being quite nice on Kaya the five mana kaya because then you can put a ghost counter on herself so then when she dies you can cast her again that's interesting we'll have to keep an eye on on this one for sure next up we got excribiente vampirica a brujo a brujo is a warlock or a witch yeah no a warlock yeah vampire warlock <laughs> i speak a bit of spanish of course it's so similar to italian uh five mana for a tutu what Four colorless and one black for a vampire warlock with flying. Whenever you gain one life during your, well, you know, whenever you gain life during your turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Okay, so you can potentially gain a lot of life in one turn. We know that, so this can grow pretty quickly, pretty big. <sighs> Beg your pardon, but five mana is just prohibitively expensive. No, I don't think this will see any play. And then I do like that. Whenever you lose your life during your turn, you also put a plus one plus one counter on it. So. Nice that it's gain and drain, you, you both get, you, you know, you get counters on it no matter what's happening to your life total. But yeah, like I said, unless you can find a way to cheat this in earlier, like before it becomes a significant threat, it needs to sit on the board for at least one or two turns. Uh, that's like bringing you into turn six, turn seven. I don't know if there's going to be a vampire deck or any kind of life gain deck that really cares too much about having this at the top end you probably rather just play something like uh you know your westgate regent or something like that but we'll have to see yeah and there we go and then yeah oh, okay okay yeah that makes sense they had to split it up like that next up we got the black market tycoon Hmm, cat rogue. Interesting creature types. Golgaric, uh, sorry, gruel colors, red and green for a 2 2. And at the beginning of your upkeep, Black Market Tycoon deals 2 damage to you for each treasure token you control. And you can tap it to create a treasure token. I have exactly what you need. The question is, how badly do you need it? <laughs> Flavors on point. I guess sometimes it's okay to do 2 damage, but it's like for each treasure you control so you know you're ramping but then you're just taking more and more damage i think this is absolute rubbish maybe i'm missing something maybe you use that treasure straight away 
then it's okay, right? You tap it, make the treasure, use the treasure to cast your next thing because it's a free tap. So then you don't have the treasure at the beginning of your upkeep and then you don't take the damage. Definitely not going to be going in your Goldspan Dragon deck or any sort of uber treasure creating deck because then you just kill yourself in one turn, <laughs> right? So maybe I'm like not seeing exactly where this fits in right now, but uh, pretty cool little bit of ramp actually if you think about it. As long as you're burning those treasures every turn so that you avoid taking the damage, then it starts to look pretty good. Again, we'll have to keep our eye on that. Next up, we got a bunch of cards in Korean. Seems like four or oof, plenty of cards got spoiled in Korea today. This one looks Japanese, but these are all Korean. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have to tab into them. Ooh, this one looks spicy, just from the artwork. Hostile Takeover. Two colorless, one blue, one black, one red. Uber. Two Ubers. Uh, so Grixis colors or maestros for sorcery. Up to one target creature has base power and toughness one until end of turn. And up to one other target creature has base power and toughness four four until end of turn. Then hostile takeover deals three damage to each creature. Okay, so it's a sweeper that potentially saves one of yours. So, you, you know, the opponent has a really big creature, you have a small creature. Which is a problem because you can't block, you die. Uh, you can't attack in, you die. So you make his creature a 1-1, one, one. your creature a 4-4, four, four, and then you sweep the board. Bye-bye so his creature, now you can start attacking. That's pretty cool. It's very expensive. But, so, you know, but it can, I think this is pretty good. Let's see what people are saying here. Yeah, exactly. Shrink one dude, save one of your own, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's decent. We'll have to see if um, there's a better sweeper that this coming uh, Maestro's deck is going to want to play over Hostile Takeover. Meh, but three damage to each creature isn't terrible. Uh, I liken it to something like uh, Crippling Fear or something like that, but Crippling Fear costs four. It's a bit expensive. I guess it's because of this slight upside where you can, you know, potentially save one of your creatures. But that's kind of the same as Crippling Fear, you know, where you just, you, you name the creature type that you don't have. Uh, or you, that you have, and then, the, you know, it's one-sided. You get to keep your guys because it's not of the creature type that you named. So I think probably a bit of a wonky one, this one. But let's see how it ends up playing out in the format. Next up. This looks like a laser gun. Oh no, it's ha it's obviously Halo. It's a Halo gun. One mana artifact. It's uncommon. That's always nice. So one mana artifact equipment. Okay, another lots of more equipments. They keep pumping out these equipments and they just never quite get there. The equipment stack is still an absolute pile of trash in my opinion, but who knows? Maybe it's finally time for a good equipment deck. But uh, equip creature has pay one. This, this creature deals one damage to target creature that's blocking it. Okay, so it's can like you can always, you know, do a little bit extra damage to that to the thing that's blocking. In some cases, it might just kill the creature outright, so you, you know you can continue to swing in with the your creature that this has been equipped to. The equip cost is very cheap, and the effect is very cheap, and you can do it over and over and over. Pew, 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 with my Halo gun. Yeah, and you equip it to a Death Toucher. That was, I was just about to say that. <laughs> well, good on you. You equip it to a Death Toucher, and then, of course, you can do this. You can pay this one however many times as you want. That's pretty cool. That is actually really cool. I think I'm definitely going to try this out. <laughs> It's not a minimum, like, you know, broken card or anything, but that, that's a really cool flavor-wise. I'm fresh out of mercy today. Why don't you ask Sparky here for her forgiveness? <laughs> uh, next up, we got something in Selesnya colors with a spade on it. Let's have a look-see. Ceremonial Groundbreaker. One colorless, one green, one white for an artifact equipment. A crypt creature, another equipment. Equip creature gets plus two, plus one, and has trample. Nice. Uh, equip citizen for one, or equip normal creature for three. Okay. 
construction in New Capenna is imbued with both tradition and ritual. There's plenty of citizens. If you guys haven't been noticing this in the set, there's lots of citizens. Obviously, it's just a city, so it's full of citizens. Uh, so, I, I, and I like this new thing that they're doing where like certain things cost less to equip to than others. So then, you know, you can sort of figure out where you want to be putting this card a little bit better, you know, citizen, tribal, or whatever. Hmm. The only citizens we have in standard right now, I believe it's just the... Uh, so sorry guys it's very early in the morning mm, i think it's just the um prosperous innkeeper okay now we've also got the skullport merchant and the new dockside chef mm. i think uh probably more interesting with the because it's you know in in white and green with the innkeeper because the deck that is going to be pooping out all the citizens is the cabaretti deck um and there's uh you know gonna be things entering the battlefield every turn and triggering the innkeeper so you're gaining some life because of the alliance mechanic that's you, what you want is to like have multiple tokens or creatures entering the battlefield every turn and um a lot of those that i've seen so far in the spoilers are citizens so eh, the ability to give one of them a nice little buff for just one mana is not bad at all next up we got somebody with a black panther Handsome Outlaw. Are these, some of these are really pricey. Um, but it's a common, so probably won't see much play. Probably some draft chaff here. Six mana for a vampire rogue. When um, he enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to each opponent, and you scry two. Mm. Okay. And then you can pay two colorless, exile it from your hand. So... Hmm... Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. That's actually pretty interesting. This might see some play. So you exile it from your hand, and when you do so, you ha you add, uh, you know, blue, black, red. But you have to pay two to do it, so you're only really gaining one mana up in terms of mana pool, but it's fixing a little bit the colors that you need. And then it ends up in exile, and then you can cast it from exile. But still, you're probably never going to cast this thing for six mana. But it is a full five. <laughs> yeah, it does feel a little bit like an adventure. Yeah, not every day you see a three-color common. Interesting, interesting one. We'll have to see. Probably, again, definitely for limited. Probably, definitely. <laughs> Next up. Wow. Looks like some floating cliffs. A white card seems to be a sorcery depopulate two colorless and white white for a sorcery speed each player that controls a multicolored creature draws a card then destroy all creatures ah a four mana board wipe it's been a while in white we've got doomscar of course but um mm. <laughs> giving me sort of shatter the sky vibes in your control deck i don't know most of the times you don't have too many creatures so it'll probably mean that the opponent is drawing a card but it might be okay in a in a deck where you have like a control deck where you have like a sparing number of multicolored creature threats to deploy and then you need to pull the trigger and you know sweep the board before you can restart your your, your battle plan and uh you get to draw a card on top of getting rid of the opponent's creatures but i think in general even though ugh, it's a bit of a downside because the opponent might get to draw a card hmm <sighs> that's most of the time going to be still uh, a tempo advantage you know two for one three for one you give them a card but you've gotten rid of three or four creatures still still worth it next up we got rooftop nuisance two colorless and blue for sorcery speed with casualty one Ta tap target creature that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next unstaff step draw a card so you could potentially 
tap down two creatures for three mana, draw two cards. <laughs> as long as you've got a um a thing that has um power one or greater to sacrifice. That's not terrible. That's not terrible at all. Nice little common. Next up, we got more gruel cards. Stimulus package. Ooh, it's an enchantment. Okay. Two colorless and gruel. Red and green. When it enters the battlefield, create two treasure tokens. Sacrifice a treasure token, create a 1-1 green and white citizen creature token. That's not bad. Whenever you have... Um, Treasures, it's not just the ones that it makes. You can make a lot of these 1-1 one, one, uh, green and white citizens, and then that might synergize with your, you know, there's a lot of citizen stuff going on, as I've been saying, so that's actually not a terrible card. I'm calling it now. There'll be a creature that sacks treasures to deal damage to another one, giving blah, blah, blah. Oh, probably. Nice. Very nice. I like that for an uncommon. It's four drop slots. Very, very crowded. Might not see much play in standard, but I like that, definitely. Next up, we got the Metro. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. Finally, an angel. I knew there would be an angels, like they had to be angels, uh, you know, go back and look, the last deck I put up was an angel tribal deck, and I was just saying, look, I'm making this deck because I have a feeling we're going to be getting some new angels, and I kind of want to see where this will fit in. It's uh, not the right colors, although it might be an Esper deck, which is cool because we get access to counter spells and things like that. Uh, Metropolitan Angel is a uh, four mana, two colorless, and Azorius for a three one with flying, and whenever you attack with one more creature with counters on them, draw a card. <gasps> I wish it didn't say one or more, but still, a little bit of card draw every time you attack with creatures with counters on them in the deck that, uh, you know, puts counters on things, the Obscura are doing that, so I think this could be pretty nice. A little bit of card advantage would be nice if it was three mana instead of four. That's probably why it's uncommon. Yeah, exactly. Nah, too expensive. Decent and limited. That goes for a lot of these cards today. Next up. Bomb Expertise. Three colorless. Uh, sorry, two colorless, one red for an instant. Players can't gain life this turn. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Bomb Expertise deals three damage to any target. Oh, I still with these three damage. It's so little. But uh, maybe a nice new card to play instead of Magic Missile in your burn deck. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe a sideboard card for like, you know, against life gain shenanigans. I like that also damage can't be prevented. That's really not terrible. That's really not terrible. Definitely going to give that a try in, in uh, my new mono red burn deck. Next up. Oh, a French one. Enemy public. Enchanté créature. Tous les créatures. Attaquant le contrôleur de la créature enchantée à chaque combat, si possible. Each creature that attack the controller of the creature that's enchanted at, at each combat step. Uh, no, it, yeah, attack. The, okay, so it's like a, a magnet for attackers. Let's see if I got it right. My French is a bit rusty. Two colorless and a blue for an enchantment or an enchant creature. All creatures attack and crown. Yeah. All creatures attack enchanted creatures controller if possible. So you put it onto your opponent's creature. Right? Then uh, your creatures. All creatures attack enchanted creatures controller if possible. I don't understand why you would want to do this. The whole point of having creatures is for them to be in the way of you and the opponent's creatures. 
So if now you're making all of the creatures go for you instead of it, that kind of defeats the purpose. If you put this on your opponent's creatures, you can only attack the controller. You can't attack creatures. So I guess maybe planeswalkers, where you can either choose the creature or the planeswalker. So it's a way of like protecting your planeswalker because they can't attack it. They have to attack the pub, you know, the thing that public enemy is uh, enchanted upon. <laughs> and then, you know, if it eventually dies, you get to draw a card, a little bit of an upside. I think, I mean, it's not terrible, but I just, I don't, meh, meh, meh. Next up, <laughs> we got uh, Seraphine Fracas. Another French one. It has flying. It is an angel in the colors that I like for the angel deck. And uh, when she comes onto the battlefield, you gain three life, pay two, exile her from your hand, and uh, a land gains click, add one, one white, one blue, one black, until... until Seraphine Fracas is cast from exile. You can cast Seraphine Fracas as long as she's exiled. I think I nailed that translation, guys. Ooh. Man, I'm, I've been missing talking French. Um, it's really expensive, obviously, but it's an, it's a kind of like this guy here, right? Where you it's cheaper to do the exile thing. It's only two. So you, you have her in your hand, you pay two, you exile her. And then um, you can give a target land the ability to gain it, you know, to tap for whichever color you want it from in the deck that, you know, plays those colors. And as long as she remains in exile, uh, you can then cast her. And I like that both of these have like this additional, you know, it's really expensive, but maybe later on in the game, you finally get to cast them. And then once you do, you got a little upside. Uh, this one gains you three life. The This outlaw over here does two damage to each opponent and get to scry two. That's actually not terrible. They're just a little bit too expensive, I think. Like, sure, you exile all of them straight away. You're never going to keep this in your hand and try and cast it for that much. Like, uh, you, you exile it straight away when it's in your hand and then it does its thing for the whole game. And then maybe late, if the game goes really late, you can start casting them from exile. But it's just really expensive. Interesting concept, though. Interesting mechanic. Interesting ideas. I like that. Um, next up, we got a card in what looks to be Japanese. Yes. Bigweb.co.jp. Quezza, the Augur of Agonies. One colorless and obscure colors for Cephalid Advisor. Okay, this was in the Marrow's teaser post. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Okay. Nice. Four mana, three, four. Not amazingly statted. But... Hmm... Might end up being pretty good. Let's see what the comments are saying about this. This is not once per turn. This is a winning strategy. Good point. Very good card. Billy. <laughs> Someone always has to... Oh, that was a disgusting card. I'm so glad it's out of standard. Is it legendary? Infinite with Lich's Mastery. Not idea. No idea what card that is, but cool. I think pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Doesn't trigger once each turn. It says whenever. It's not one or more. So, can potentially draw lots of cards in standard every single turn, and that's going to definitely start to add up. And it's nice that it's got four toughness, so it's not that easy to remove. Next up, we got the Obscura Interceptor. Lots of obscure cards today. Nice. Uh, this one is also quite expensive at four mana. Same costing cost, but it's a three one with flash and lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, it connives. When it connives this way, return up to one target spell to its owner's hand. Hmm. That's a kind of a counter spell, no? Although it's not really countering it, it's just returning it to the opponent's hand. 
kind of like what um, divide by zero could do. But it has the connive, so you know it, it might grow straight away. The turn it comes into play, it becomes a four-two with flash and lifelink. So you block something. Is it target spell? Does that mean no, it doesn't say target creature? But does that mean anything really? I mean, creature spell. Does that mean you can return a creature? So you flash this in, connive. It becomes a four-two with flying, uh, with with lifelink. You block something small that won't die. You know that won't allow your interceptor to die. You gain four life, and you bounce the bigger thing that you weren't able to block to the opponent's hand again. That would make it incredibly good. But if it's just a spell, then you have to wait, you know, like an instant or sorcery. Then you have to wait for the opponent to cast it. That spell's on the stack. Then you flash this guy in uh, and you connive and return that spell to the opponent's hand. So probably good against like count, like countering a counter type of thing. But eh, might be just a bit too expensive. We'll have to see. Next up, oh, looks like this is the Ascendancy. I would be pretty sure that this is the ascendancy for the obscuras i was waiting to see this one yeah so obscure ascendancy white blue black for an enchantment whenever you cast a spell if its mana value is equal to the number of soul counters on obscure ascendancy plus one put a soul counter on obscure ascendancy then create a 2-2 white spirit creature token with flying as long as there are five or more counters on it all spirits you control get plus three plus three Wow. I don't understand how you put the first soul counter on it. Whenever you cast a spell, if its mana value is equal to the number of soul counters on it, plus one, There are no soul counters on it when it enters the battlefield, unless they've translated this wrong. Whenever you cut, so let's say, I mean, I don't understand. There's no soul counters on it when it enters the battlefield. So how can anything that you cast ever be equal to it plus one? I guess we'll, you know, once I figured that out, the rest of the cards is pretty amazing. Esper enchantments with um, the already really good Hallowed Haunting. Uh, hello. That's going to be freaking fun. <laughs> you bring this in as the last enchantment that you need to get to the seven for Hallowed Haunting. No, no, that won't work. You first need to get this. So you, you know, anyway, you get what I'm saying. That could really be nice in the enchantments deck with Hallowed Haunting. And, you know, a bunch of really good enchantments are in black and, and uh, blue. Really good ones. Uh, there's been some amazing ones. I've actually been looking at a, an Esper enchantments deck uh, on the, you know, to, to bring you guys between now and uh, the drop of Streets of New Capenna. So stay tuned for that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a bit slow. I think by the time you get to five, the opponent's just going to remove it. But uh, nice to poop out a little white spirit creature token every turn if you casting the right spells we'll have to see how that ends up working out next up we've got ooh, a black mythic Ooh, nice the body cleaner two colorless and a black black for an ogre rogue an ogre rogue with death touch whenever another non-token creature you control dies body cleaner connives okay you get to grow it bigger with the connive and then whenever it dies, you return another target non row creature card with equal or less power from your graveyard to the battlefield. To the battlefield. That is a really nice card. That is a really nice card. Ogre, rogue. Rogue. I liked this in, on Facebook earlier. Uh, loses a creature when another one dies is kind of bad, I think, because of your losing. Sorry, Billy, that was a bit of a, I think, a misread, but it's not a, an obvious card to read. This guy is dope. I love how there's cards that overlap between mechanics. So I wanted to put this in red and black. Casualties, Knives deck, 
could be gross fast. The three three with death touch, and then I can buff him the turn it comes out. Yes, please. Yeah, I think that's actually really good. That's actually really good, and it's not legendary, so we can have multiples. Ooh, I cannot wait to play with the body cleaner. Cannot wait. Mono black aggro. Hell yeah. Next up, we got Psychic Pickpocket. Five mana for an uncommon Cephalid Rogue. Um, hmm. Whenever it enters the battlefield, it connives. Whenever it uh, connives this way, return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Okay, so a bounce spell on a creature that also can get bigger. But it can only get one bigger because it's not an attack trigger or anything. It's just an ETB trigger. So it'll uh, at most be a 4-3, which is not bad for five mana, I guess, in in the colors that want to be playing this type of thing but probably again some really expensive cards this set like prohibitively so don't think this is going to see any play in standard because of that next up ooh, we got more ogres okay ogre tribal is starting to be a thing finally uh we've got the new guy from um kamigawa what was his name hidetsugu We've got a couple of ogres. There's the ogre head home. There's uh ooh the you know Hidetsugu consumes all. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Ogre warrior, three mana, six four. What? <laughs> what? Three mana, six four with menace. Whenever shakedown heavy attacks, defending player may have to dis no may have you draw a card. If they do, you untap Shakedown Heavy and remove it from combat. Okay. 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 So you can play it on turn 3. Turn 4, you attack. The opponent doesn't want to deal with a 6-4 menace. So they allow you to draw a card and it bounces back to your hand. Then you have to recast it, wait for the summoning sickness, attack again the next time. But there'll be certain situations where the opponent really doesn't want you to draw a card or whatever. And then you can just start attacking in with, um, with this guy. But I think it's less about the dealing six damage to an opponent uh, than it is, uh, you know, card advantage. That's actually really not that bad at all. I like that. I like that very much. Next up, we got Illuminator Virtuoso. Two mana human rogue with double strike. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell you control, it connives. Ooh, Magecraft. Hello. It seems like Magecraft is getting a lot of love. We got already a few. I'm not going to scroll down and find them, but you'll just have to watch those past episodes of Spoiler Talk. But uh, there's been a few cards that I've noticed uh, really, like there was one that had to do with uh, however many spells you cast each turn. You know, of course, in Magecraft, you want to sort of storm off. I think uh, there's going to be a nice Magecraft deck finally, like a real competitive one. There's, it's getting a lot of support. Um, yeah. You get to connive whenever it gives the target of a spell you control. So you can grow it and buff it with the spell you're casting on it. Really nice. Really, really nice. We'll definitely see some play, in my opinion, if that deck becomes a thing. Next up, Toulouse, the Clever Conductor. Ah, oh, it's another one of these crazy cost, you know, mana values here, the with the dual pips and stuff. But I like it because it can be played in a mono blue deck. It can be played in a, uh, you know, two color deck, white and blue, or it can play, be played in, in, in black and blue, or it can just be just played in, in Esper. Uh, so it's a three, one human rogue. When it enters the battlefield, connives. And whenever you discard one or more cards, exile them from your hand, from your graveyard. And then when he dies, you put the cards exiled with it into its owner's hand. That's freaking nice, dude. <laughs> That's freaking nice. Hmm, that's freaking nice. All the cards exiled this way into their owner's hand. That's really good. That's really, really good, guys. Uh, I hope you can see why. Connive is putting things into your graveyard anyway, right? Because you're discarding stuff to the connive. Draw a card and discard a card. And whenever you discard it, that card ends up in exile. From your graveyard and then you wait for you know if, if uh to lose dies then you can bring all those cards back to your hand that's really good man that's super duper good because it keeps growing oh no it's only when it enters the battlefield imagine if it was into the battlefield and uh, attacks but anyway still really good next up out of the wave move bull get out the way four mana instant 
It costs two less to cast if it targets a green permanent. Okay, so it looks like we're getting another cycle of these like specific color hate cards. Um, so it will then end up only costing you uh, two two mana, and uh, you return target non-land permanent and opponent controls its owner's hand, and you draw a card. Nice. So maybe just sideboard against mono green if mono green becomes a big problem. You just bounce their, their you know their creature for two, and you draw a card. Oh, pardon me, man. What a long day it's been. Next up, we got security bypass. A two mana enchantment aura, enchanted creature. As long as enchanted creature is attacking alone, it can't be blocked. Nice little portals. He's getting into the bank vault and out. Enchanted creature has whenever this creature deals damage to a player, it connives. Ooh, ooh, very nice, very very nice, very very nice. Not sure where I would put this yet, but very nice card for a common. Very, very nice. Next up, ooh, we got another hideaway card. Hideaway 5. Temporary, uh, cemetery Tampering. 3 mana, 2 colors and a black for an enchantment with hideaway 5, which means whenever this enchantment enters the battlefield, you look at the top 5 cards of your library. You exile one of them face down and put the rest at the bottom of your library in random order. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill 3 cards. Then, if there are 20 or more cards in your graveyard, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. Ugh, it's a weird... Yeah, a weird sort of reanimator, no? Very strange card, but nice, I guess. I mean, you hide away your tox rule, you keep doing your mill and reanimate shenanigans at some point, maybe you get to 20 cards in your graveyard, and then you just... Pew, Cast your Toxel for free. It's not terrible. I think this will see some play. I'm definitely going to try it. And it's milling three a turn. So, you know, it's pretty quick to get to that 20, especially if you've already been doing some stuff before this gets onto the battlefield. Next up, we got the plant dinosaur that Marrow alluded to during his teaser post. Uh, Topiary Stomper. Three mana one colorless and two green for a plant dinosaur with vigilance but when it enters the battlefield you get to search your library for a basic land card put that onto the battlefield tap then shuffle topiary stumper can't attack or block unless you control seven or more lands so you know three mana fourth war i was already like oh crap here we go but it can't really attack for a while you need to wait till turn seven well i mean turn six in this case because you know you're putting one onto the battlefield Maybe you just play another Topiary Stomper on turn four. So if you do that, so turn three, you've got three lands, you played this guy, now you've got four. Turn four, you play another one of these guys, you find another land, and you've played one for your turn. Now you're up to six already. So the following turn, turn five, you get to attack with two, four, four Vigilance guys. Me? It's not terrible. It's just nice also that it ramps you, you know. That's really not terrible at all. I hope the, you know, the payoff is good enough. Like, and I like anything with Vigilance these days because I'm just so sick of uh, the Wandering Emperor. It's like you can never attack with anything these days. It's just going to get exiled. Next up, we got Echo Inspector. Probably more draft chaff here with the, with the common. Four mana. Bird Rogue with flying. Whenever it enters the battlefield, it connives. Draft chaff. Next up, Revel Ruiner. Cephalid Rogues. Lots of rogues, guys. Lots of rogues. <sighs> uh, this creature can't be blocked except by the lip. So it's got Menace. 3-1. When it evident enters the battlefield, it connives. So you can make it a little bit bigger every you know time you're conniving. Oh, no, sorry. That, that, that's the thing. Like, connive. It's only on this creature. You can't put those counters around where you want them to. So at the most, this will just be a 4-2 with Menace. Meh. Next up, Hypnotic, Hypnotic Grifter. One mana, human rogue, uncommon. Pay three, it connives. So you can continuously connive. But three is a bit much, which is probably why it's uncommon. If it was like just two, that would be pretty bust though. Just connive every turn for two without having to tap. And then you just put counters on this guy every time you do so. That's actually really not that terrible. We'll have to see how that ends up playing out. I know I say that a lot, but uh, it's really tough to guess sometimes, like where it'll fit and how it'll play and, you know, what's the best deck for it, etc. Next up, we've got the last rare of the day, Unleash the Inferno. 
in John, yay, or Riveteers. I'm still like, I'm, yeah, I think I'm a Riveteers slash uh, Cabaretti is going to be my two favorites, but we'll have to see. Uh, unleash on the streets, uh, Unleash the Inferno. Uh, one colorless and Jund, black, red, green, instant speed. Unleash the Inferno deals seven damage to target creature or planeswalker. When it deals excess damage this way, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to the amount of excess damage. Nice. Very nice card. Very, very nice card. I like that a lot. So many funky upsides, artifacts or enchantment. Seven damage is great for four mana. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, there's no excess damage. Good point. Cool, 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 cool. Which brings us to the last card of today. My eyes are starting to close. I'm yawning way too much into the camera. I apologize, but uh, we've made it. We finally made it, and I can go off to bed. Rafine's Informant. Human Wizard 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, it connives. Eh, another one of these, but in white. Just rubbish. All right, so that's going to be it. Let's do one last refresh and see if anything else was spoiled. Ooh, two more. All right. Ah. Nice that it's Cabaretti stuff, though. I've been waiting for the Cabaretti stuff to start dropping. Uh, we've got a 4-2 Elf Shaman for three. Okay, so this is the signpost uncommon for that tribe or that guild or that crime family. Uh, Brazen Upstart is a 4-2 Elf Shaman with Vigilance. Nice. And it's multicolored. Nice. I'm so sick of Vanishing Versa and, and uh, Wandering Emperor, guys. I cannot tell you. Today, in testing for tonight's brew that I've been wanting to, to play... I made a monocolored deck and I went against three Esper Walkers decks back to back before I hit record on this video. And they just, they just exile everything you play. And uh, don't get me started. Anyway, <laughs> uh, when Brazen Upstart dies, you look at the top five cards of your library, you may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, then put the rest in there. Okay, that's nice. That's really nice. That's really, really nice, period. You know, you just uh, keep finding the creatures. It's going to be in the deck that has Alliance, the mechanic. You want to be casting lots of creatures every turn. You might run out of those. So then you can just keep attacking in with your Brazen Upstart. It's got Vigilance. You can hold it up as a blocker. Um, so then, you, you know, at some point, four damage coming through every turn is going to be too much. The opponent will either block it with one of his own creatures or remove it, at which point you get to um, do the thing. Reveal a creature card, put it onto your hand. Nice. Very nice. Next up, we got the... F now it's the last card. Rakish Devilers. Okay, so it's the one of these expensive, but exile it first, but come back later, like this guy and uh, this guy. Now we've got the Cabaretti one. So when it enters the battlefield, you create a one... And, yeah, and they all have this like little upside when it, then eventually you cast it. You create a one green, green, and white... Uh, Okay, this is the, the weakest one as far as effects when it enters the battlefield. Uh, but you can exile it. Uh, okay, and then it fixes your mana. It's exactly the same as the other one. You can give a land you control the ability. So you're just making your land into a triome, essentially. Nice, man. I actually kind of like these. Let's see how they end up playing out. But that's going to be it, guys. We finally made it to the end of today's episode of Spoiler Talk. Some incredibly spicy cards today. Uh, let me know in the comments which your favorite one was. I definitely know that I'm going to be having some fun brewing around with Luxior over here. I kind of really enjoyed this little uh, Death Touch gun. Uh, the Sweeper wasn't that good. This Interceptor, eh, I don't know, some, some, some weird ones. But I think probably if I had to call it... For my favorite card of today, it's definitely going to be this guy. The Ogre. The Body Cleaner. I like that a lot. Alrighty. I will see you all tomorrow for some fresh, fresh brews. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, sorry for the little pause. I was, uh, you know, in the tournament. Uh, it was a really fun experience overall. Did manage to get into the fourth or fifth round. And I ultimately ended up getting kicked out of the tournament by the guy who won the tournament with a really, really disgusting combo Jeskai deck with, uh, you know, you basically drew, you draw your whole library making treasures with the gold span dragon and then eventually you fling the gold span at your opponent and you get to use a show of confidence to do all that treasure. 
And, you know, he was just drawing through his whole deck with unexpected windfall. And then, of course, he had Leer, so you can do everything twice. Disgusting. One of his... I, I just sat back and I was like, okay, I mean, I've lost the game. Let's watch this. I promise you one turn took, like, close to five minutes. And then, boom, he just flung the, dra the dragon at my face on that particular game. I did end up going 2-1 against him, so I'm quite happy. But anyway, like I said, that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all tomorrow. And until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab, signing out. Peace, y'all.